In this video, we are going to do a 3D scanner torture test. Specifically, we are going to 3D scan some of the most challenging surface types we run into in the real world. These surfaces can be found on all types of parts and objects. For this test, we are going to see how Creaform's latest handheld 3D scanners will perform on a variety of surface types and finishes. So to start, let's take a look at the surface types we are going to test. We won't bother with the easy surface types you see in most 3D scanner demo videos. Anyone can easily and quickly scan a flat white part or cheap plastic fake chrome part. The surface types in this challenge are as follows. Machined aluminum. Specifically, very shiny aluminum with sharp corners. Why sharp corners? Because 3D scanners have a real issue trying to pick up the surface in the corner. The scanner light tends to scatter all over the place in the corners, and you can get some really rough or missing information in those corners. Carbon fiber. The challenge here is the scanner light tends to go through the clear coat and pick up the carbon fiber underneath. This is not the fake printed carbon fiber, but the real deal with a thick, glossy clear coat. This can be a real challenge if you're trying to inspect the finished surface or create high quality surface models from the 3D scan data. Highly polished chrome. We're not talking about the cheap vacuum metallization chrome you see on plastic parts here. This is real electroplating, which produces a much smoother and shinier surface that you typically would see on metal parts. Translucent parts. For this torture test, we chose two very clear parts with some real curvature to them to see how well each 3D scanner can do. Foam. There are many types of foam out there, so it would be impossible to test them all. However, open cell foam tends to be harder to 3D scan than closed cell foam. So let's see how they do on these samples. Shiny black plastic. Unlike many plastics, this part is really smooth and dark. This type of part can be a real challenge for some scanners, especially in the corners and fine detail areas. Electronics. Electronics are made up of all surface types, such as dark and shiny, as well as translucent areas. They also include fine details, narrow passages, wires, etc. You name it, and electric circuit boards probably have it. Fabric materials. There are thousands of fabric material types, but this stuffed animal with its long, dark hair can be a nightmare for most scanners. Other materials. For fun, we put a few more objects on the table, such as bubble wrap, a water bottle, and more. So we'll see how well they do with each 3D scanner. So why don't we just use some sort of 3D scanning spray on these surfaces? Well, 3D scanning sprays can certainly help, but there are some issues with them as well. For example, sprays can be messy and create fallout when you use them. This means you need to go outside or spray in a well-ventilated area. They are also flammable, which can be an issue depending on where you use them. Another issue is if you need to travel somewhere via an airplane to do some 3D scanning, you can't take these sprays with you. Also, if your 3D scanner requires targets, you will need to apply the targets first, then spray the part with the scanning spray, and then use something to clean the spray off the targets. Otherwise, the 3D scanner will not see the targets. In addition, when done 3D scanning, you will need to clean the spray material off the part. On certain parts with fine detail, that can be a real hassle. Now, there are some newer scanning sprays that evaporate over time after you apply them. These work pretty well, but they are very expensive. Finally, some customers will not allow you to use any 3D scanning 
spray on their objects no matter what. Asking a customer to apply a 3D scanning spray on a carbon fiber McLaren P1 is out of the question. Certain aerospace and military materials and surfaces are also a no-go. Other things like one-off movie costumes, props, electronics, fabrics, and other things may also be prohibited. So let's get started. First up is the Creaform HandyScan 700. Now, if you want detailed information on any of these 3D scanners you see here in our test, we have some very in-depth demonstration videos and we have linked them in the description below. Let's also look at our criteria of the test. Point spacing. We are setting all 3D scanners to 0.5 millimeter point spacing. This is a pretty common resolution and should be tight enough so that we can see how well each 3D scanner is doing. Keep in mind, resolution is not accuracy. Scan time. We spent a reasonable amount of time scanning each part. With some parts, with more scanning time, you could probably get a little more information. But the point of the test was to see how well they do in general. We'll point this out in more detail as we analyze the results for each 3D scanner. So let's take a look at the results. Overall, the HandyScan 700 did a great job, especially when you consider its price point. It did struggle a little in the round corners on the aluminum machine part and certain small detail areas of the black plastic part. Also, the chrome replacement knee was a real challenge with its curved surfaces and shiny material. The two clear LED lenses were also a real challenge with very little data acquired. The foam, electronics, round chrome part, soda can, and carbon fiber part all 3D scanned well. The water bottle, mirror, fur dog toy, and bubble wrap are not really usable data. The HandyScan 700 completely 3D scanned six parts and partially scanned three more, giving two points for each part completely 3D scanned and one point for a partial 3D scan the HandyScan 700 scores a total of 15 points. Next up is the GoScan Spark. Unlike all the other 3D scanners in this test that use a laser light source, the GoScan uses a structured light pattern emitted from an LED light source. This technology traditionally has always struggled with challenging surface types. Most people who have used this type of technology in the past know that applying some sort of scanning spray is fairly common to get good scanning results. The advantage of the GoScan Spark is its large scanning volume, speed, and ability to scan in full 3D color. So how did this GoScan Spark do? Well, as you can see, it struggled on many of the surfaces. It penetrated the clear coat on the carbon fiber part to pick up the underlying carbon surface. Also, most of the shiny surface parts were a real challenge. The machine part is okay, but missing most of the scan data in the sharp corners. Spending enough time on the electronics will yield pretty good results. Here they are animated in full color mode, just to give you an idea as to what the color scan data can look like. So overall, if you had to 3D scan a lot of challenging surface types, the GoScan Spark would probably not be the best choice at that is not what it was designed for. The GoScan gets 14 points for completely scanning five parts and partially scanning four more. Next in our test is the HandyScan Black. With its 22 blue laser lines and ISO certifications, the HandyScan Black did a very good job on the dark parts, machine parts, and even the chrome parts. Improvements in laser technology, optics, and software show well in the results on many of the parts. The translucent parts, mirror, water bottle, bubble wrap, and toy dog were still a challenge and the data is not really usable. Overall, the HandyScan Black 3D scanned nine parts completely and one part partially for a score of 19 points. Finally, the Metroscan Black. 
Like the HandyScan Black, the MetraScan Black uses new blue laser technology. What's different about the MetraScan is the lasers have even more power. Because of the way the MetraScan works, the onboard sensors don't have to search for targets like all the other scanners in this test. This allows the MetraScan to get the most data of any scanner in this test. The translucent parts are still a challenge though, for sure. Same with the bubble wrap, toy dog, mirror, and water bottle. The MetraScan was able to 3D scan 10 parts completely and partially scan one more, making it the winner with 21 points. So what did we learn from this test? Well, the laser-powered 3D scanners certainly do a better job on the most difficult surface types, but they are not perfect on a few of the surfaces. However, if you have no issues with using 3D scanning spray, then every scanner in this test will work just fine. Which scanner is right for you will depend on many factors, but hopefully this test will help you in making your decision if 3D scanning spray is undesirable or not an option in your workflow. If you would like to learn more about any of the 3D scanners in this test or arrange an in-person or web-based demonstration, Give EMS a call at 877-845-2700 or send us an email at info at ems3d.com.